So um, today I'm going to talk uh, with you about translating SharePoint pages with Azure AI Translator service. Uh, but before I start, um, just a little bit about myself. My name is Mohammed, and I'm a Microsoft 365 SharePoint developer and technical lead at Atea Global Services. I enjoy contributing to the community and uh, developing solutions for Teams and SharePoint Online. Uh, I also got some awesome badges from the community. You can find me on social channels like Twitter, LinkedIn, and if you have time, you can also have a look at my repos in GitHub. Recently, I started to uh, blog um, some articles about Microsoft 365 and development stuff, so you can also check out um, my articles uh, that I created in um, my blog at mohammedamir.com. The uh, agenda for today is going to be about a um, brief intro about uh, the project that I created and how it works and quick demo and the fun part which is exploring the code and the sample links. Um, so having um, multilingual content accessible in SharePoint, as you know, uh, becomes more critical than ever, and it helps having effective communication uh, in today's globalized world. And I'm thrilled to present uh, this demonstration, showing case um, the transformative impact of multilingual content accessibility within SharePoint pages. The solution is so simple, really it's so simple, it's not complicated, and it seamlessly integrates SharePoint webhooks with Azure Functions and Azure Translator service by uh, exemplifying how organizations can break down language barriers and enhance global uh, collaboration within uh, SharePoint environments. Um, and as always, there are some prerequisites. The prerequisites are in the Azure uh, portal level and in SharePoint level. Uh, in Azure portal level, we have to have Azure app registration in order for, uh, for us to um, authenticate our requests to uh, SharePoint. And second is provisioning Azure AI Translator service in Azure portal. I'm not going to deep dive into how we can create the Azure app registration and provisioning Azure AI Translator service, but I believe that you can find out how you can uh, create the app registration and provision Azure AI Translator service. Um, so, SharePoint level. In SharePoint level, we have to create SharePoint webhook subscription in the SharePoint site that we are going to implement the multilingual pages translation. Uh, second, in the SharePoint level is enabling translation feature in the SharePoint site. Then how it works. SharePoint webhook, uh, SharePoint webhooks allow SharePoint to trigger Azure function whenever new pages are added to site pages. Then create translation pages. Uh, Azure function will create uh, translation pages based on the translation languages that you enabled in the SharePoint. Subsequently, another Azure function will utilize Azure Translator service to handle the translations based on the translation languages that you enabled in SharePoint. And then 
it will update translation pages with the translation content. Let's go to our demo. So as I mentioned, I enabled a few uh, languages in my site. The default language here is English. And I enabled Arabic language, Spanish and Swedish. I don't know Spanish, I don't know Swedish, but let's see what the AI will give us. And for the sake of the demo, I will run the solution locally. So instead of creating the webhook, I will trigger the Azure function locally, and I'll show you how we can do that. Let's make sure first that the code is running. Yes, code is running. And then let's create new post. I will just go with the basic text. And uh, one thing I didn't mention is that I added um, one uh, site column uh, with this name, automate translation, in order to um, trigger the translation when it's true. So whenever the automate translation is true, then after I will publish my post, then it will be translated. And at the end of the process, this column should be updated to be false. Then the page will not be translated again. And whenever you want to update the translation, you have to make this field true. It's true by default, then let's publish our post. And in the meanwhile, instead of having the webhook, I'm going to trigger the webhook locally. I mean, I will trigger the Azure function uh, instead of triggering it using the webhook. Now we have created one page and the Azure function will be triggered because, and here, as you see, it's triggered. It's running in the background. And first time the Azure function will be triggered, it will create a page for every language, a new translation page for every language. Let's see if it work it or not. By refreshing this news post. It's still running, yes, because I set some debugger. Let's maybe disable Debugger. Yeah. Okay, we have some errors, but let's see. Hopefully it will work. Yeah. Yeah. So as you see, I when we created the page at the first time, we didn't have these languages. But now we have these languages. But seems that something went wrong for publishing the Spanish translation page 
uh, after the translation. So this is the page that we just created, the English version. And let's check the translation of the other languages. First, let's go to Arabic language. As you see, it's translated by consuming the AI, um, Azure AI translator service. What about Swedish? I don't know Swedish. If you, if anyone knows Swedish, so he can maybe <laughs> tell us if it translates properly or not. But of course, uh, we can enhance the project and making sure that it translates um, perfectly. The Spanish version. So as I mentioned, something went wrong when it tried to translate the English to Spanish. I will check that and um, I will update the project and submit um, my changes to the project in GitHub. And um, before our call, I I tried to create one news post and it went well at that time. And here is the Spanish translation of the English. Um, I don't know Spanish, but yeah, maybe it's correct. So let's jump into the code. Uh, it's simple. So we have three main Azure functions. First one is events. And this events Azure function will be called when new page is created inside pages. And um, SharePoint uh, webhooks will trigger this Azure function, sending us uh, payload of the new uh, page that is created. Um, here, um, I'm just serializing the um, notification that we are receiving from the webhook and adding a message to uh, another Azure function to handle the and process the remaining uh, functionality. The second Azure function that will receive uh, this message is check changes. Why here I'm checking changes? Because uh, when we create the news post at the first time, the news post will be like the source. It will create a source page and if we have source page, then here I'm checking if we have recent uh, pages created, then I, I'm using here uh, the awesome PNP core to create the translated pages for the source page. So this line of code will create for, in my case, for, uh, three, three versions of the source page, Arabic, Spanish, Swedish. And by creating these three pages, then it will trigger again because new pages uh, have been created. So it will be triggered again. And, um, and here, um, I'm getting the uh, translated pages and uh, the newly created translated pages and looping through these pages and uh, creating a model and passing the uh, creating new message and passing the message to another Azure function to handle the translation of every page content. Then the translate pages Azure function will be triggered for every 
for every newly created translated page. So here, the main idea here is to check um, and get the content structure of every page. So in the SharePoint online provider, I am looping through every page, getting the text web parts and passing the text in every text web part to the translation language to translate it. But uh, getting the page content structure based on a model here to have the full page content structure, then passing the source page content structure and the language that we are going to translate to. And the text translation provider will translate for us um, the content to the respective page, uh, respective uh, translation, sorry. And once we get the translation for the source page content structure, then we again update the page content structure with the same structure as it was. Then after that, we update the, uh, the field that I mentioned a few minutes ago uh, to automate the translation, update it with value false. Um, also here, there are some important configuration for the Azure Function app to run uh, properly. Here is um, the uh, SharePoint client ID and thumbprint and um, also the same client ID and thumbprint in order uh, to authenticate our requests to SharePoint and get results. And the uh, Azure AI translator key endpoint and the uh, resource location and the API version. It's important for the translation service to run. If you would like to deep dive into the way how I'm translating the content, you can check uh, my repo, checking the providers, SharePoint uh, online provider and text translation provider. So, yeah, this is a very quick uh, overview about the project. And here you can find the sample code for my project. And soon I will publish uh, an article about this project. So if you would like to um, collaborate with me or if you have questions though so we can uh, collaborate about enhancing the project thank you